Thank you everybody for joining today. Um, it's a pleasure to be joined by Rebecca Picard from Liquid Expat Mortgages in Hong Kong. Rebecca, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really well, thanks. Yeah, nice to see you on this uh, on this webinar. Um, so, so everyone, today we're going to be talking about um, the German property market. Um, we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of the market from tax to legal. Um, and we're going to talk about those fantastic interest rates that we see. Of course, we know globally that rates have been going up for quite some time now. But certainly Germany is a shining light in terms of the current interest rate environment. So Rebecca has joined me for the first part of the presentation, whereby we will just talk about what those rates are. We'll talk about the mortgage process, etc., which I think you'll find very enlightening. So let's get into the first slide, if we can, please, Bella. So let's start, first of all, with a bit of background to IP Global, because I know there's a lot on this webinar who uh, are not familiar with the company or the business model. So I just want to spend a brief moment or two talking about that. So IP Global um, has been around since uh, 2005. I joined pretty much at the beginning there, uh, spent time across Hong Kong and Singapore. Now I'm back in the UK. Um, we have transacted on 6,000, over 6,000 um, properties. That's over 3 billion USD of property investment across 18 countries. So we are a very established global property business uh, at this moment. Next slide, please, Bella. So the uniqueness of the company is the business model. Uh, we don't just market property on behalf of developers. Um, without taking risk, we actually take risk just like our clients do. So what we actually do is we underwrite our deals. Effectively, that means putting cash down on each and every property. Um, that helps us drive prices down. It actually helps us show commitment to the investment. In effect, whatever we don't sell by the time the project is built, we have to buy with our own capital. So this is a very unique uh, um, business model. So when we talk to clients about the fact that we believe in these projects that we present, we genuinely do, because in effect, whatever we don't sell by the time a project is built, we have to buy any unsold units. So taking a step back from that, clients like the fact that we have skin in the game. They like the fact that, in effect, we are going to do a tremendous amount of research and due diligence before we launch a project. We need to look at how well capitalized developers are. Do they complete on time, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you can never take all the risk away, um, but you can downsize that risk. And that is the important thing here. And as I say, the fact that we have our own capital invested is very reassuring to our, to our clients. Next slide, please, Bella. So in terms of markets, we have invested uh, over 18 markets uh, since I've been in the business. We've highlighted some of the main ones here, um, which are the US, Australia, uh, the UK, and of course, Germany, which we're going to be talking about today, which we have been investing in for nearly 10 years now across 23 projects to an amount of over 150 million US dollars. So we have tremendous experience in the market and that's very very important for me to put across you know we've been working in this market now for 10 years and and we we not only present the opportunities but we are experts in managing the process of buying from beginning to end of the transaction next slide please Bella. okay so when a client does invest with us um, we actually can introduce them to lawyers um, we would introduce them to liquid extract mortgages, of which obviously Rebecca um, is, is, is um, form, first and foremost uh, a representative of, of uh, liquid expat, and she will use her expertise to source the best mortgages for our investors. Um, we can then also do all of the lettings and management for our clients. So that goes from finding the tenants, drawing up the agreements, putting the rent in the account, dealing with ongoing service issues and to the point where actually we can also do resales as well. So we can actually sell the property that the client has purchased sometime down the line. So it really is an end-to-end -end, 
service. Um, so, so Rebecca, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add at this point before we go into the couple of slides um, about um, you know the, the service proposition that Liquid Expat provide. Yeah, so um, we have been running for about 15 years now. Um, so we do mortgages, mostly the two countries that we would focus on would be the UK and Germany. Um, and like IP Global, we've got offices globally to try and help clients all over the world. So um, we are a mortgage brokerage, but we very much specialize in helping expats. So whether that be people living outside of the UK who are looking to invest in the UK um, and want a mortgage to do that, or you know anyone living outside of Germany, so the UK, Hong Kong, Singapore, wherever, who then wants to take out a mortgage in Germany. So we've got a huge amount of experience um, within this sort of more niche field when it comes to mortgages. Um, and we've, as I say, we've got offices all over. So there's me in Hong Kong, our head office is in the UK, and then we've also got Dubai and South Africa as well, as well as our team on the ground in Germany. Thanks, Rebecca. I mean, basically, obviously I know from our dealings, you've been in the business for many, many years in terms of the, the, mortgage, the mortgage business. I think it's well over 10 years now. So I can tell you, I can vouch for, for Rebecca in terms of the good work she's done with, with clients. And this really is a value add that effectively we have an integrated mortgage uh, desk within our within our business to to assist with clients. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you for that, Rebecca. Um, so so Bella, if we can just go on to the next slide, please. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, the favourable interest rate environment uh, with Rebecca in a second. Um, Rebecca will then pop off as I talk about investing in German property. I talk about um, the main markets to invest in there. And also there'll be a chance for Q&A at the end of the session. Um, so if we get into the next slide, please, Bella. So let's talk about the favorable interest rates that we see. Um, if we can just move into the next slide, thank you. Um, so I think that, you know, the major point to sort of emphasise here is um, there is a clear sort of discrepancy in terms of UK rates, for example, and others to, to, to German rates, which we will reveal in a second. Um, I think the point that we, we would make really about um, Germany is that the process of getting lending is pretty smooth. I mean, arguably, if you are, even if you're German, um, and you are living, for example, in Singapore, and you have a, an account with Commerce Bank in, in, in Frankfurt, it's very, very difficult to get lending when you are um, uh, outside of Germany. But the point, point we would make is that, you know, effectively, we have um, an opportunity, we have a lender we work with um, for many years now, who is expert in lending to expatriates. And that is a real strong value add. And I can't emphasize that enough, but the fact that we have an opportunity to get leverage in for overseas investors. Um, as I mentioned, rates are considerably lower than than, than, than most um, most rate. Uh, sorry, most um, uh, uh, mortgage um, markets globally, and we'll share some of that information in a minute. Um, and basically, those low interest rates are really making it attractive for investors in Germany at this time because the rental market is similar to the UK. Rents are going up. There is tremendous undersupply, which you'll hear me talk a lot about through this webinar. Um, so we're going to see consistent rental inflation. But as I say, you can you can lock in really good um, mortgage rates in Germany at the moment. So before we go on to specific numbers in terms of what those rates are, um, Rebecca, obviously, this is your bread and butter. You do this day in, day out. So, do you, you know, do you just want to share a few thoughts from your side in terms of the mortgage process? how it is, for example, if you compare to, to the UK and, and really how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the key thing with the German mortgages for me is that when it comes to these, you know, new build developments, the, the process in Germany feels very common sense, I would say, which gives buyers a huge amount of security right from the outset. So with the German mortgages, you can actually have your mortgage offer two years in advance of the property, completing which means you've got that peace of mind from the get-go that the finance is there it's in place on top of that with the lender that we work with which is why it's so good that we're, we're integrated with ip global we can run the project past them up front 
and they will say yes we are happy to lend on this prop this property and this project so the valuation piece of you know any issues at valuation stage anything like that it all goes completely out of the window we know up front that the lender is happy to go ahead. They even confirm the loan to value that they're willing to lend. So from the get go, we've got a really, really strong understanding of exactly what the mortgage is going to look like and that it's going to be approved. Um, yeah. It's very much the mortgage is very much on the property rather than the person. So in Germany, the applicant themselves they just need to earn the equivalent in whatever currency they earn in of 13,000 euros a year, which most people hit. Um, touch wood, I've actually never had a German mortgage declined because it is so, so close to being approved because of the unit and the property itself. It's a very small, you know, tick box to, to get the applicant themselves approved. Um, so it feels very common sense. It takes a lot of the concern out of things, especially when you are buying something that maybe doesn't complete for a while because you've got that offer so early. Um, and on top of that, from a from an administration perspective, you know, life admin of documentation and trying to gather everything together, they also don't ask for a huge amount of documentation. So typically it's passport and proof of income whether that be a tax return, pay slips. Um, and then there's some lender forms, which are in German, but of course we'll provide all the translations so you know what to fill out. Um, so it's it's really, really straightforward. It, you know, it's it's a lot more, it's just a lot more simple. And, and as I said at the beginning, common sense from a mortgage application process. Um, and typically as well, turnaround times, once we have got those lender forms back, usually takes about two to three weeks for the mortgage offer to come through. Okay, so, so, so in, in, in essence, you're saying it's, 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 a, it's a more straightforward process than, for example, the UK. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, where obviously there can be a mad panic at the end, potentially. Um, the fact that you've got the reassurance that you lock your mortgaging at the beginning rather than the end. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. you know, in the UK, it's it's great. You know, that's you know, I'm from the UK, I know mortgages inside out there, but the mortgage offers are valid for six months. So as you say, it's not a mad panic at the end, but you are much closer to the completion date yes. before you know that your mortgage is there. And it just yes. takes all that worry away in Germany because it's yeah. two years in advance. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's that's really Really good information to share, just to highlight the difference in terms of the process for, for mortgaging in Germany versus, for example, the UK and many other markets. So, OK, great. Let, let, let's go on to the next slide. So let's reveal those rates that, you know, we talk about that are absolutely outstanding. So, um, you know, obviously we've seen rates go from 1%, uh, which obviously was an exceptional period of time to 3.9%, but, you know, just to give some context, you know, globally, you can be looking at, for example, Bank of England rates of 5.25%. Arguably, they will be on the, the way down at some point, um, but actual then, um, you know, mortgage rates are significantly higher than what we put on the screen there, be it that you can, believe it or not, lock in a five-year fixed rate mortgage in Germany, 3.85%, and a 10-year um, fixed rate at 3.91%. The, obviously, the point about this is, is that it enables you to really manage your, your cash flow, the fact that, you know, for a 10-year mortgage um, fixed at that rate, you know that, and I'll share more of this as we go through, that in the major cities in Germany, uh, the market is undersupplied. So you know that you are going to get healthy rental inflation, but you know that your fixed cost such as your mortgage, will be set at a certain level for 10 years. And then, of course, after 10 years, it is actually capital gains tax-free. So locking in, for example, a 10-year fixed-rate mortgage absolutely makes sense. So, Rebecca, maybe if you just want to sort of share you know, thoughts on those interest rates, basically, um, as I say, when you think about other, other rates globally, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if we compare it to the UK, as I obviously would, um, 
you're looking at fixed rates, you know, five year fixed, for example, starting at 6.4. So it's a vast difference for expats. Um, they don't, they don't, we actually don't have anything longer than a five year. So the sort of stability and security that you can get in Germany, it's not really comparison for expats in the EU sort of looking to invest in the UK um, and the interest rates are just so completely different you know paying 6.4 versus 3.85 or, or the 3.91 for a 10 year it's um, yeah it's, it's just a vastly different interest rate market across the two um, and then combine that with the simplicity of the application it's it's almost a, a joy to do the mortgage when you compare <laughs> I'm sure that is the case. I know I know the hard yards you have to do for mortgaging. And um, as I say, it is, it is hard to argue against the process for mortgaging and, and the fact that it absolutely it makes sense to, to use leveraging in Germany for those rates, but also from a tax perspective, which I'll come on to later in this presentation. But um, yeah, I think I think that's it's really great to share what those rates are for all the attendees, Rebecca. And I know that you know, obviously, you um, you know, you, you you'll be sort of popping off the presentation now. But just what I wanted to share with everyone here: if you are keen to um, have a have a, a communication, have a call with with Rebecca, who's based in Hong Kong, you know, do drop me a line at the end of this uh, webinar, and I will connect you with Rebecca. It's well worth speaking to her, obviously about the German market, obviously about the UK market as well, because that's the that's the um, uh, the yeah, they are the two key markets that she she works in, and, and she'll be able to absolutely assist you with her length and breadth of experience from from over the years in in, in mortgaging. So, Rebecca, thank you for joining today. Thank really you. appreciate it. Really appreciate your time, and uh, it's great to introduce you to the to the big audience we have today. No problem at all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca. Have a nice weekend. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. OK, so that was Rebecca from Liquid Expat Mortgages and really good to sort of share with you one of the uh, members of the of the team that's uh, integral to the um, the business model that, that, that we have on the end to end service. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to have this integrated business model we have, you know, buying a property is first base. That can almost be the easy bit. It's how the process is managed. And that's how we get judged. And as I say, we have the, the whole service from um, the lawyers to the mortgage to the lettings and management side. So, Bella, let's move on to the next slide, please. So now we're going to talk about some of the benefits of investing in Germany. So we're going to talk about um, the key reasons to invest in Germany. And I think you'll find this very interesting. So let's get into that slide, please, Bella. We're just taking one of the bottom ones there first up. I mean, it is the fourth largest uh, economy in the world. It is the heartbeat of Europe. It is the biggest population in the in the Eurozone. It benefits from freedom of movement. Um, there's a lot of inward population growth in, uh, in Germany um, as the powerhouse of Europe. Um, so that's that's the, 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 the first thing to say here. Um, but then let's um, let's sort of, sort of talk about the actual sort of process. Let's talk about some various steps here. So, as I alluded to earlier, no capital gains tax after ten years. I mean, if you can share with me another market outside of Asia in the eurozone that has no capital gains tax, um, please let me know. So, very very tax advantageous. You hold the property for ten years. You don't pay any tax on your profit. So you can lock in a nice 10-year fixed rate, as we shared there, at 3.9%, um, get nice healthy yields year on year, put your German property in a drawer, forget about it, and at the end of 10 years, look to sell uh, with no capital gains tax. Um, Pre-approved mortgages, as Rebecca mentioned. So you're getting um, confirmation of mortgage at, at the beginning rather than at the end of the process. Um, that's that's very comforting for the investor. We shared the um, the mortgage rates, so obviously we're talking sub four percent. Um, so you pay stage payments in Germany. So very simply, we have the whole process from beginning to end. So as I say, we have the lawyers, um, 
the lawyers will basically check the various milestones as the building is built after your initial deposits. Um, your mortgage is drawn down in phases as the building is built. That's the reason you do your mortgage application at outset. The lawyer will check that the building is genuinely up to the next level of build before signing off the, um, the, the amount payable from your mortgage account to the developer. So it's a very systematic structured process as you would expect in Germany. Um, there is compensation for delayed construction. This is um, one of the reasons why projects do typically run to time in Germany. Um, in effect, there is rental compensation paid if the project is delayed. Um, and as I say, that legal structure is, 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 is paramount because um, if you look at also what happens typically if your project is delayed for say a year, then effectively your costs are returned to you, all money is returned. So I think the point about Germany is when clients are looking at it and thinking, well, I don't really know a lot about it, I'm keen to learn more about it. Once you get into the detail, once you understand about most importantly, the, the legal process and the structure, it really does start to give you some confidence to look at that market. Um, the one thing I haven't mentioned is it is also freehold property. Um, in terms of the lawyers, I mean, we've been working with the same lawyers for over 10 years now, and they are absolutely brilliant. They will provide a copy of the contract in English. They will hold your hand all the way to the handover of that property. And from our side, as I say, we have the whole infrastructure too. So we have a presence on the ground in our main markets we invest in, in Berlin and Leipzig that I'll share in a second. And as, as you've just met, you've met uh, Rebecca from Liquid Expat Mortgages. Okay, so let's go into the next slide, please, uh, Bella. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about actually the tax benefits of investing in Germany. So actually some of the tax benefits are sort of rather like um, the UK from a few years ago. There are still good ways to invest in the UK through a company structure, for example. Um, but I'm gonna share after this slide an example of um, your potential tax bill if you are taking leverage in. So what can you deduct? You can deduct your mortgage interest. You have something called depreciation of the building. So keeping this very simple for you, it is the figure which is 70% of the purchase price, and then you take 3% of that figure, and then you can deduct that from your annual um, rental income uh, as an expense. Um, and I'll work through that example in a second for you. You can deduct service charge, you can deduct your management fee. And then as we shared, there is no capital gains tax after 10 years. Um, that 10 year period starts when you sign your contract. So let's say it's a two year off plan build. By the time the project is built, you have just the eight years left till you're out of that capital gains tax period. Um, and that includes, as I say, the whole of the entire building period. Next slide, please, Banner. So let's work through an example. Let's share what I just uh, spoke about on the last slide. Here is an example of a property purchased at 375,000 euros with a 65% uh, loan to value mortgage uh, with a rent of 18,600 euros a year. So these are the deductions you can make, your service charge, your interest rate, um, the depreciation figure, as I mentioned. All of those deductions would mean that the total taxable profit is 394 euros. That amount would then be taxed at 14.2%, which means that on that income of 18,600 euros, you would be paying 56 euros in tax per annum. So this is really good to share with you all to give you a very good understanding of how your tax position would look on a month to month basis. Now, we have the accountant in Germany who would file the tax return. That's easy. Um, and as I say, this clearly does show you 
um, aside from the capital gains tax, um, the, the the way that uh, investing in Germany really does stack up on your on your income and your rent that you receive month on month. Next slide, please, Bella. Okay, so I think for me, this is one of the most important slides I'm going to put on here. We all talk about undersupply. It is a global issue. It is a fact that um, there is undersupply across the globe. Um, that's due to um, slow building rules and regulations, um, uh, lack of planning uh, application staff uh, in local authorities. Um, it's due to energy efficiency ratings increasing. That's a big one in Germany. Again, the regulatory environment, the quality of the build means that buildings need to reach a very high standard before their applications are signed off. Um, but what you've also had in recent years, of course, is build costs going up. You've had um, uh, the, the fact that interest rates have gone up, of course. Um, we know it's a lot less in Germany, but nevertheless, that has led to less property being built. Now, when Olaf Schultz came to uh, become the German Chancellor just a couple of years ago, he set a target of 400,000 homes per year. So keep that figure in your head, 400,000 homes. When we go through these slides, you will see that, um, you know, and if you look at the figures here, particularly on the completions uh, on the blue on the left here, um, you will see that those completions are far less than 400,000 uh, a year. And in fact, when I get onto the next slide, you'll see what the future holds over the next few years. So again, we talk about Germany, lots of inward population movement due to the freedom of movement in the European Union. Um, there is more and more people coming into German cities. There is less and less property being built. Indeed, if you look at the amount of apartments that were, were built, and these are a function of city centers, in 2022, there was only 158,000 apartments built. If you then look at, on the right, if you look at, in terms of the construction backlog, it's absolutely huge. So projects have not yet begun um, in the uh, dark red, uh, and then in the lighter red, skeleton construction underway, uh, very early sort of uh, construction underway there. And, and actual what's been completed from a, from a construction backlog perspective is, is very, very small. So all of this feeds through to um, the fact that, you know, the market is, is very, very undersupplied for all of the reasons that I, that I mentioned from um, build costs, interest rates recently rising, um, the fact that energy efficiency being such a big thing in Germany, you know, they, they, these, these properties need to be of a very, very high quality before they're signed off. And also big backlog post, um, post COVID, which is still gonna take many years to work through. So let's go through some of these numbers on the next slide. So according to the German Property Federation, they are facing um, 700,000 home shortage over the medium term. Only 295,300 dwellings were built in 2022. So if you bear in mind that Olaf Schultz set the uh, threshold of 400,000 when he became chancellor a few years ago, um, and basically considerably less than that, 20, it's close to sort of 30% less was built in 2022. Um, and, and actually in some of the major cities like Berlin, the supply gap, is, is basically growing in cities like Berlin, the capital, which is ultimately driving, driving rental increase. So if you look at the residential completions forecast, actually 2022 looks a good year because 295,300 built in 22, 242,000 in 2023, and 214,000 in 2024. So over the next few years, Population is growing in Germany and the amount of stock coming into the market is decreasing. And this, this is critical data for investors to look at before obviously, they make investment decisions. Then let's compare that with between 1950 and 1922 uh, and 2022, sorry. So an annual average of 405,000 homes 
were built. So this is this is huge. This is huge discrepancy in terms of the amount of build. Um, and you know, as I say, the the undersupply is going to be a long term issue. And investors like undersupply. They like undersupply married with population growth. Next slide, please, Bella. So in summary, um, what you see in Germany, the housing trend for the medium term is you have a very large rental market. Germans have actually typically been uh, renters, but actually more and more have moved to buying because they've recognized property as an asset class. Um, there is very strong rent rental demand in, in, in Germany, as there is in, in many places globally now, as the trend has been to to um, to rent rather than buy with interest rate rises, etc. Um, that strong demand is driving high rental prices. Um, and I'll share some of that for our key markets in a second, what we are seeing in the marketplace in real time right now. Next slide, please, Bella. So the long-term outlook for Germany, as I say, Germany is a very strong and stable country with good rule of law. Um, what we are going to see over the next number of years is ongoing population growth. That growth is coming from within the European Union. It's coming from Eastern Europe. There's been a lot of movement into Germany since the war in Ukraine. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of jobs in the big cities. And, and as our as our um, lettings representative in Berlin told me, he said, you know, look, there are jobs in, in Berlin, there are jobs in Leipzig, there are jobs in German cities, but what there isn't is sufficient good quality rental stock that young professionals are looking for. Um, so the rental market will be strong for quite some time. And as I say, I cannot emphasize enough the tax efficiency that we see in the market from capital gains tax to uh, obviously income tax payable on your on your rent. Next slide, please, Bella. Okay, so now I'm gonna drill into specific markets. I wanted to share the high level because the high level is very important in terms of the market and the process. So let's look at where we're investing and where we have been investing for over 10 years now. So everyone knows about um, the challenges that Germany has faced from the fall of the Berlin Wall, or you would if you were as old as me, uh, having been to the old East Germany in 1977. Um, uh, but uh, that's a long time ago for, 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 for many of you. But just to share with you, um, you know, since the fall of the Berlin Wall, since the integration, since the last 20 years or so, um, Berlin has really become a cutting edge uh, global city, but it's been playing a lot of catch up. And that's the exciting thing. Every time I go to Berlin, I see how it's evolving and changing, but it still lags behind from a property price perspective, tier one cities like Paris and London. It is a tier one city, but really with tier two pricing still. Um, so what's going on in the city? So you've got big corporates like Next Netflix, You've got Rolls-Royce, big employer at, um, at the airport, the new Brandenburg Airport. Finally, it's built. Very un-Germanic, the delays. But nevertheless, um, it's a huge economic region now. There are so many big corporates there. I could have listed many, many more here, uh, including the likes of Siemens and, and, and many others. Tesla. So Tesla, um, as we all know, um, positioned uh, their factory there as their uh, European hub. There are actually 12,500 employees at the factory that um, opened in 2022. Actually, that's near our Kerbenik project, which I will share with you in this presentation. There will shortly be 18,000 employees. Of course, this is a huge growth industry in the automotive industry. And then you have all the corporates that you see in um, Hong Kong, you know, the, the PWCs the IBMs, the Microsoft. There, there is a, it's a very attractive city, uh, Berlin. There is a lot of wealth creation there. There's a lot of young people. There's a lot of talent. And that's why you see growth of these type of businesses um, and lots of, um, lots of very high salaries for, for young professionals working in uh, Berlin. Next slide, please, Bella. 
So, of course, everyone will have heard of Berlin, the capital of Germany, but not so many will have heard of Leipzig. So just to share with you, Leipzig is pretty close to, um, to Berlin. I've actually been there uh, quite recently. Uh, it is a fantastic city. Um, just taking a step back, um, again, when the Berlin Wall fell in the 1990s, um, there was a mass exodus to the uh, effectively West Germany. Population dwindled. Um, and then basically, it wasn't until the early 2000s that there was a high level um, uh, strategic plan to grow the infrastructure, to encourage corporates to come back. Um, and that has uh, translated into making Leipzig the fastest growing city by population in, in Germany. Um, now, if you look at, aside from employees, it is a very attractive city. Culturally, um, you have uh, a whole host of historic buildings. Many German uh, composers live there, such as Bach and Wagner. Um, they had the first um, global uh, newspaper back in the 1680s. It's always been a center of innovation and it has constantly reinvented itself. And what we see now is really a, um, a wonderful grade A city. Um, I mean, when you go there, it is extremely attractive, wonderful historic buildings, magnificent transport system, great tram networks. Um, and because of that infrastructure, that's why you see a number of these corporates. So um, DHL, it's their European hub, BMW uh, and Porsche, um, they are building electric cars there. Um, these are the future industries. Um, and alongside that, you have um, uh, the, 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 the usual suspects that you see in major cities of KPMG, Deloitte's, uh, Ernst & Young, uh, IBM, and a whole host of, of others. Next slide, please, Bella. So let's just have a quick look on the map um, before we go into a bit more detail. So that's Berlin, that's Leipzig. It's around about 100 miles from Berlin to Leipzig. It takes about an hour on the train. I've done it. Um, really good connections between the two. Actually, lots of people live in Leipzig and they commute into Berlin. And they do that because, of course, property prices are cheaper. But Leipzig has an amazing road and rail network, uh, which stretches to all those major German cities that are highlighted there. And of course, Berlin um, is really a cutting edge global city now with the new airport, um, allowing you to um, fly there direct from Asia now um, for the first time. Um, and as I say, it really is a, <laughs> Um, um, a creative hub. It is a, a city where it just continues to go from strength to strength. And every time I'm there, when I was last there back in June, you know, I see more and more shiny office blocks, more and more better infrastructure. And it really is an exciting city and a very, very prosperous city. Next slide, please, Bella. Okay, so let's share just a little bit of information in terms of Berlin. Um, I'm conscious to keep these webinars reasonably short, um, but let, let me just hit some of the main spots here in terms of from a property uh, perspective. So if we can get into the next slide, please, Bella. So if we look at um, uh, population growth, we've seen average 5% growth in the past five years, very healthy population growth. You've got that incredible skyline there in uh, in berlin one of the one of the great growth areas is um uh, Euro europa city which is basically close to the hot barn hof station i was there in june there is 16 and a half thousand employees going in there where you have the likes of pwc huge kpmg offices etc the skyline is consistently changing um we've talked about undersupply in germany it's extremely relevant to to berlin 18,500 new homes required annually until 2030 to fulfill the housing shortfall. It's nowhere near those figures. And that's resulted in rental increases that we see as much as 24% uh, over the past year in certain sectors of the market, uh, given this very, very strong undersupply. 
we're going to the next slide, please, Bella. So given the fact that there's nowhere near enough homes being built, um, given the fact that obviously we see very, very strong rents, that's why you have a vacancy rate of less than 1%. I mean, we talk about the UK uh, rental market being strong. The vacancy rate is, is on a par with that. There are more and more people looking to rent property. There is less and less rental stock in the market. So that transcends to a five-year average rental growth of 8%, but also an average capital growth of 8.1% over a five-year period. Um, and as I say, as you saw from those figures earlier in this presentation, supply is not going anywhere near where it needs to be, that 400,000 figure for many, many years. And in property, you have two choices. You rent or you buy, you have to do something. And the fact is, that is why you know the market is going to be robust for a long time to come. Next slide, please, Bella. Okay, so let's just flick across to see how Leipzig shapes up from a property perspective. As I shared with you, fastest growing city in Germany. Let's move into the next slide, please, Bella. So what have we seen there from a population perspective? So 27% since 2000 so that's a big number over the past 23 years it's it's expected to grow very very strongly up until 2040 and then start to tail a little bit but still be consistently strong so that's led to a very strong undersupply of housing which currently totals just over 10,000 um and you know part of the reason is you've had a huge increase in gdp since the high level strategic planning that I mentioned came into force in 2000. Indeed, one of the attractions of Leipzig is commercial costs are typically cheaper than many German cities, um, but it has a fantastic road rail network, which is why so many corporates are based there and therefore an ever growing size of economy um, and a housing deficit that is gonna remain strong um, you know, to 2040. Uh, and uh, and beyond. Next slide, please, Bella. Okay, so similar to, to Berlin, the lack of supply, the growth of population has basically seen a 9.1% rental increase in new builds, more than double the five-year average. Across the board, rents have gone up around about 59% over the last uh, 19 years. That's taken into consideration all property. And it is a very young city. It is a, a very young aspirational population. And that's always important for property investors because you want cities where people are young, they're hungry, they want to earn money, they want to earn more money. Um, and therefore that will feed into property prices. So 51% are single person households, which is why typically we get the properties that are obviously very relevant to certain locations here, which is which is very, very important. Um, the largest discrepancy between uh, demand versus completions, as I say, it's, it's all to do with undersupply. There is tremendous undersupply, um, which is gonna be in place uh, for, for, for many, many years. As Germans move into Leipzig, you know, they move uh, across Germany and also across Germany uh, from the rest of the European Union. And, uh, and beyond. Next slide, please, Bella. So I just want to touch, excuse me, on the on the actual projects we have live now. As I say, I've I've visited these projects recently, and I'm able to give some really good context to them. So this is Eve's quarter. This is our project in Berlin. Um, We've captured a lot of growth in the center of the city. We're always looking at where's the next place to invest? Where is it cheaper to rent and buy? So this is a fantastic location, which is between the new airport and the city center of Berlin. But what it has on its doorstep is science parks. It has the new Tesla factory. Um, within a 30 minute uh, radius, 
there is an extremely strong economic hub in the locality. Now, in terms of just some of the localized information, as I say, I went to this project, it's literally four minutes from the station, you walk down to a really nice cobbly street and you come to this um, location. And this project will be built over the next two years. The area of Kerbinick, where it is, <clears throat> is an area where I would relate it to if, if you know, a, a very nice attractive location in Surrey was only 20 minutes from the center of London, this would be it. There's nice parks, there's waterways, um, beautiful river, um, it's, it's, it's a really lovely area to live in. Um, and we've done a project here before, but people are moving here because it's cheaper to rent and it's cheaper to buy than the center of Berlin. But nevertheless, you hardly get any stock in this area. Um, it's purely through relationship with developer that we managed to get this one. Um, the vacancy rate here is incredibly low. As I say, we know that because we've done a project here before. But with all the industry in the locality, and there's a lot of people earning a lot of money in this area, we see this as a very strong growth prospect. So you're buying a one bedroom apartment from around about 380,000 euros here, which will be completing uh, in, in, in two years time. And if you'd like more information on that, obviously I can, I can share that with you. Do drop me a line. Coming on to uh, what we have in Leipzig. So let's just flick over the uh, next slides, please, Bella. Okay, we've got two projects in Leipzig. We have got the Boulevard and the Curie Park project. What's the difference between the two? Um, the Boulevard is slightly north of the city centre. Um, Curie Park is on the west side. The, the trendy Lindenhau side of uh, Leipzig. So both of these projects um, have really strong attractions. Uh, the Boulevard, they're all two bedroom units, so slightly more expensive than the Curie Park. Curie Park is a, um, a period building dating back to the 1900s. Um, they are all one bedroom units. Uh, difference in completion dates, if clients want to get their capital in quickly, you're talking about a uh, completion date of Q2 24. Um, if you're looking for a, a longer build process, more time to get the capital in, the boulevard is Q1 2025. I've been to both sites. Again, the Curie Park is obviously a really nice sort of localised park area. It's a, it's a part of the city which is kind of renovating, rejuvenating. It was a former industrial part of Leipzig, but now there's all trendy bars and restaurants. A uh, great transport system nearby. Um, the boulevard, when I was there, um, I stopped nearby for lunch. Um, it's got a tram stop literally just outside the building that gets you into the centre of Leipzig within 15 minutes. So both of these will appeal to, to young professionals. And from a, from a client perspective, really fantastic developer. Uh, Bika, the developer, we have worked with a number of times in Leipzig on earlier projects. So we know they build a good front project um, and they are very good at sort of sharing updates um, to keep clients fully informed of their investment as we go through the process. So that's um, that's a summary of the current projects. And of course, if you need any other information on these, I'm very happy to go into the detail. I want to keep this kind of reasonably brief um, uh, for you today in terms of the projects, but happy to share more in due course. Okay. So now we're coming to questions. I know there's been an awful lot of questions that have been coming through. People asking about those attractive mortgage rates, um, also in terms of uh, the market itself, et cetera. So we have some of the questions here. I'm actually, I'm just conscious of uh, your time. I know it's quite late in Asia. Um, I'm just gonna highlight uh, some of the main questions here that we've had. So let me have a look down. Um, Okay, so someone has asked here, um, fixed rates or variable for Germany? Okay, so maybe they didn't catch the first part of the presentation. So essentially it is fixed rates. The, the market is very much geared to fixed rates. That actually provides a lot of stability in the, uh, in the mortgage sector, of course. Um, so basically, yeah, just to recap for you all, we are talking about a 10 year fixed rate mortgage of 3.9%. And as context, you could be looking at the moment in the UK to closer to 
5.8% uh, for a average five year mortgage. So that gives very good context to the mortgage. Um, someone has asked here, Berlin or Leipzig, should I invest in uh, uh, Berlin or Leipzig? Um, I mean, my answer would ideally be you invest in in both because they are very attractive cities. I think I think it, there's a few considerations here for where you invest. Um, if you look at the Curie Park, for example, that completes in April 2024. So if clients are keen to get their capital in quickly and receive a yield, that one could well be for you. If you want to put more capital in, the Boulevard project in the trendy north side of Leipzig, 15 minutes from the city centre that I visited, um, is is obviously all two bedroom units. So that's um, slightly more capital in there. Um, and then in terms of um, Eve's Quarter, which I think is a fantastic location. And one of my German clients commented recently that if he was in Berlin, that's where he would live. Um, you know, I think, I think that has the best of all worlds because we've got one and two bedroom units there. It completes in two years time. So it allows clients time to get their, get their capital in. Um, but obviously that uh, 10 year capital gains tax clock starts from uh, when you sign the contract. Uh, but as I say, an incredible host of, uh, of corporates in the locality. I, I can't emphasize that enough um, with the new airport, with Rolls Royce, with, with Tesla, with the science parks, um, with the fact that Berlin city center itself is 20 minutes away. And I've done the whole journeys here into the city center, um, to the new airport, on public transport, by taxi. So, you know, really, really great location. Um, okay, next question here. If I buy with IP Global, um, what do I do about mortgage, et cetera? I think this may have been someone who joined slightly later again. Um, so just, just recapping, really buying is first base. You know, buying the property is really where it starts. That's really where it gives us a chance to earn our reputation. We will introduce you to lawyers who have done hundreds of transactions. We will introduce you to Rebecca Picard for the mortgage conversation. Um, and we will do the letters of management for you. So you'll never get a phone call from your tenant. We will keep everything uh, under the office on the ground in Leipzig or Berlin and manage everything long term for the rental of your property. Um, is it a good time to buy now? Well, I think, you know, purely in terms of supply v demand, if you look at supply, it is incredibly undersupplied, as we've seen in Germany. That is only going to impact in pricing as we go forward. You have the comfort of a 10-year fixed rate. You're going to get rents going up and up. And I think just take a step back from all of that for one moment. Look at the fundamental reason to invest in property. It's it's all about effectively using the leveraging, um, effectively pulling in your, for example, 35% in Germany, getting the 65% financing from the bank, getting your tenant to pay down your mortgage loan um, and taking all capital appreciation out by the end of the period or 20, 25 years, that property is paid off and you've put 35% in typically. Now, as we know, for all the economic data and all the reasons discussed, you're going to see good capital appreciation here. But purely on the leveraging side, the fact that you are locking in um, great rates, capital gains tax free, and yields that are going to go up consistently over a period of time, investing in Germany right now really does make sense as part of a balanced portfolio of, of assets. Okay. And finally, how long does a German mortgage take? Well, okay. So as Rebecca mentioned, it's very much about the process is done at the beginning rather than the end, as in many markets. So in effect, um, basically within a short period of uh, signing your, um, your contract, the mortgage application will be done. And then basically you have peace of mind. And then after that, um, from an investment perspective, um, you know, what I do is I reach out to my investors and share the quarterly update, build photos, et cetera, um, and really sort of keep up my clients informed of um, how their project is going, what's going on with the local market. As we lead up to completion, 
and then obviously we will arrange the letters of management at the appropriate time and we can sell the property too one day as well. Um, I think in closing, what I would say is, um, you know, because of the uh, fundamentals in the market in the process, we have so many clients who've invested more than once in Germany because it does work very well. And that's obviously um, really good to put across uh, for um, everyone on this on this um, webinar. OK, so that's it. I know we're just coming up to the hour mark. I know it's uh, coming up to six o'clock in Hong Kong and Singapore. No doubt many of you will be keen to, to get away, get home, get, get into your weekend. Um, I do hope that's been really helpful for you all. I do hope that's been insightful. I've tried to share as much information as I can uh, in terms of the process, the tax, the mortgaging, the markets, the opportunity. Um, but may I say, if you've got further questions, do drop me a line. If you'd like to have a one-to-one -one conversation, it'll be a pleasure to do that. Um, all that remains for me to say is thank you very much indeed for joining my webinar today. Um, I do hope you all have a good weekend and I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Thank you very much indeed.